Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today we are doing game changing techniques face edition. I did an eye edition a while back and I am updating it but today we are doing ones for the face because I have so many new tips and tricks lately that have just helped me out so much and really leveled up my makeup application. So if you're interested let's just get straight into it. Me again. <laughs> I always forget to mention that uh, every single product that I use on my face is always listed in the description down below and I use chapters so you can <laughs> drag along to the bit of the video that you so desire to watch. Okay, so this portion of the video is always going to look crazy because I have my top of my eye makeup done but pretty much nothing else so bear with me. But let's go into hack slash trick slash thing that I'm loving number one and this relates to my bronzing now. Brontouring in a makeup artist world is wrong because you're not meant to contour with a bronze shade. However, I just prefer it. I just think it's so much more natural and so much more complimentary to my skin tone. If you can carry a cool tone shade literally in the middle of your face, all power to you, but I am not one of them. It looks muddy. I have to go with something that's in the same color family as my foundation. So that's why bronzing works for me. So using a cream bronzer to contour. Um, if you have a cooler tone or even a more neutral tone than me, perhaps you can carry a contour shade. But I am, for someone who's fair, very warm. So I'm on the very fair end of the scale, but very gold warm undertones. So um, my shades will be down in the description box. For reference, that is why I like bronzing. I've never found issue with how I bronzer. I usually use, um, excuse how dirty these are, a duo fiber blush brush for this. But I was watching a Patrick Tarr video the other day and he used this brush. On the brush it says for contour number one. And this is what it looks like. It's very, very densely packed and the bristles are synthetic but mimicking a somewhat natural fiber which is just oh anyway i saw him use it in this video and i thought oh my gosh that is working so well i am also really enjoying the abh cream bronzer in the shade amber again this is extremely warm so be sure to find your shade and i just dip the brush in again this is something that i want to point out i know it's in trend to contour and blush really high and we'll get to that later in the video but I am actually trying to slim my face down a little bit do I need to up for debate but that is just where I like to put it so I am actually putting it in those hollows like I would if I contoured and you can see this brush allows you to actually press into your hollows and apply the product and it applies it so perfectly I actually can't get over it and then I thought is it going to be good for your forehead it's actually perfect for your forehead as well it's just so densely packed that it does half the work for you it's actually somewhat crazy I literally just get rid of the product that's on the brush and I just start to press around with this brush and it is awesome so trick number one or hack number one is really just this brush like I know and I know Allure Beauty gave it a, an Allure Beauty award but I have literally never seen anyone talk about this brush so I was like oh my gosh I must spread the good word of how good it is look how beautifully it put it into my cheekbones perfect we're gonna go into hack number two. Now this still relates into this process and I did show this in my last video how I've been enjoying finding those very hollows there and putting product in there again to slim the face and sculpt the face. And I thought it was gonna be tricky because yes, that works with the Charlotte Tilbury contour wand because you can just punch right there and get the spot that you need. But I actually did give it a whirl with this brush and I didn't so much use the method of trying to punch a hole, but I actually do punch this brush in there. And I get exactly what I want. And again, that's far too much product. So I'm just going to wipe the brush off 
and start to buff that out. Now it's so crazy because you would never think to put contour this low because you know when you drag your face down but we are going to show you how I stop my face from being dragged out towards the end of the video but that is hack one and two and I am just loving it. Hack three I'm also loving as well so this relates to your under eye concealer. So I'm just going to take my Morphe E8 and press out any creasing which I don't have much because I've used my KVD concealer and that is the concealer that creases the least for me. Now this is Makeup by Ariel's trick and it's gone viral this week. Now I'm still working on whether I prefer the Beauty Blender Powder Pocket Puff or a regular puff. So whichever one you have used for this tutorial. I'm going to take my Powder Pocket Puff and the One Size Beauty Foundation Powder. I have the shade Fair 1NR. This is the lightest shade because I want to brighten my under eyes. So typically I think we all fell into this trap of I do a very, very, very light bake, like a no powder, but I still bake under my eyes a little bit. And what I've learned about baking is initially it looks very dry, very crepey, and really bad to be honest with you, but as time goes on and your oils start to come through, that's when it looks good. So about an hour after I've finished my makeup is when I really love it. This trick not only stops it from creasing, I find with baking you can still get creasing, and it stops it from being crepey even at the onset. I find my concealer work lasts a lot longer and looks the most flawless it's ever looked. Let's grab the powder pocket puff and the um, one size powder. And what the theory is, is that you apply the pressed powder first and then a loose powder after. So that is exactly what we're gonna do. I'm gonna make sure there's no creasing under there and just go in under the eye there and look at that looking beautiful and blurred already let's do the other side I don't grab a huge amount because remember we're putting two powders down so just be mindful of that oh even just that powder alone this really is a great product I'm gonna do an update on all those purchases that I bought, just a little sneak peek. I am really enjoying this powder. Now I'm going to grab my Prisme Libre powder by Givenchy in the shade two. Again, loving this powder lately. And I'm gonna do the same thing. Pick that up on a powder pocket puff and just go under the eye over the top of the last powder. It's so much better than if you had just gone in with the translucent powder under your eye or any other under eye powder. I highly recommend these two products together. So I'm going to go powder the rest of my face now and I'll be right back. The next trick has to do with blush. So I have powdered my face and I've put powder bronzer over where we bronzed, and now it's time for blush. So my favorite blush brushes are the Jaclyn Hill JH06 just for reference while we do this. Now this trick is about and it has to do with the like Barbie pink blush trend. So for this trick you need a pink blush and you need a peach blush. I have Patrick Tarr, she's that girl, and I have Patrick Tarr, do we know her? And what this trick is, is with that pink blush trend, pink in the outer perimeters of the face can look fairly artificial in my opinion and I think that's where this hack came from. So what this hack is, is putting the pink in the apples of your cheeks and the peach on the perimeter. I think it's also cool because it means you get to wear a pink and a peach blush at the same time and you don't have to pick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in with the pink being She's That Girl and grab the powder on my brush. I'm not actually gonna use the cream today. So pink on the apples. And then secondly, part of this hack is putting your blush placement really high, like abutting the under eyes. So don't feel alarmed when you see me going so close to my under eye because that is actually what I want. And you can see I should stop where my eye stops and just blend, blend, blend. Once there's nothing left on your brush, blend, blend, blend. 
Now that is really nice and high. I'm gonna do the other cheek. And then with the peach on the outer perimeter. And again, nice and high. Now it's looking a little clown-esque, isn't it? So hack number four, and this again is what Makeup by Ariel does, is he goes just over the top bits, back with the powder. You go back over it with the loose powder. So this time I am gonna take a puff just cause it's a little bit of a more delicate application and go over the very perimeters of the blush to blend it in. And I swear this is how Kylie's blush always looks so good and so like perfectly blended into her under eye and face. Oh, I am so happy with that blush application. I probably put a hair too much on, but blush is the first thing to leave. So final trick, and I'm sure I've shown you guys this one before, is with the Jaclyn Hill Mood Light Powder. Flat cut sponge, this is the Morphe one. And using it to clean up your eyeshadow, but also this is a very subtle lit within highlight situation. So it's sort of highlighting without actually having to highlight, but it cleans up your eyeshadow so good. Mine wasn't really, even if it's not, even if you think it's not muddy, just do it anyway. It just is so flattering and makes your eyeshadow look so professional. And then down the nose. This is in the shade um, Do Me, by the way. I usually use carrots, but I really wanted to like highlight today. And then the final trick, the final one, and this is how you can make sure that all that bronzer that we put relatively low, we've balanced it out by putting our, our blush really high but now we're just going to clean up under here to make sure it's not dragging the face down. I'm going to take my Prisma Libre powder again. I am going to go through this so quick, which was not my intention with the powder this expensive. <laughs> and I'm gonna take that straight cut sponge, get rid of the Lumi powder that's on it, get rid of the Jaclyn Hill powder, wipe it off somewhere, or I do have a second one somewhere, but I can't find it. And I'm just gonna clean up underneath but do not come into that pocket because or else it defeats the purpose my other tip with this one is i actually don't like to leave it on too long because or else you're left with those lines in your face which i don't want i'm going to take a separate jh06 not the one i use with my blush and just take that off almost straight away because I have caused lines in my makeup before by like letting this bake and I find you get the same sort of cleanup without having to leave it on for that long. I'm gonna take my Smith 103 to just dust away that highlight. And I just applied some setting spray as well because with that much powder, I find it really does help to reduce the ovary powdery effect, but no, I don't actually think setting spray makes your makeup last any longer. Okay, that is it from me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you'll consider subscribing if you aren't already, because I will be doing the eyeshadow edition very soon. I'm also gonna do a deep dive into the Barbie pink blush trend. I have so much content still planned, some glitter eyeshadows one, um, yeah, just so much cool content on the horizon. So please subscribe if you aren't already and I'll see you on my next one. Bye.